the show. It is January 31st, and um, the SVC released some new FTD data, so I'll be uh, plotting that and showing you what that looks like. Let me start by saying I'm not a financial advisor. This is not financial advice. This information is intended for entertainment and, 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 and entertainment and educational purposes only. So let's start by looking at some uh, pricing of metamaterials. We see that the stock is up 12% today, ending the day at about a buck 67. Uh, it did this under light volume, though. If we look back about a month ago, we see that it's down significantly since a month back. And if we look back about six months ago, we see that it's down even more significantly, where it was trading around the 5 to $6 price range. If we look at MMTLP, it's going sideways, ending the day at buck twenty-nine. If we look back a month, it's down slightly, but mostly sideways. And if we look back for most of the trading history of MMTLP, we see that it's mostly side. It's it bounces between a dollar to two dollars, and it's mostly been trading sideways. So, uh, so it looks like the stock is down, and if we only just got back to where we were six months ago, that would be a significant increase, and you might be able to make a significant gain. All that said, uh, let's not forget the reason why these stocks are interesting. The reason that MMTLP is interesting is not that it's above 29 right now. It's interesting because it's really a play on oil, and we see that the price of oil has been heading upwards. Uh, well, West Texas Intermediary is uh, is eighty seven dollars a barrel right now, and the idea is that um, Meta Materials has some oil and gas assets that they plan to get rid of, uh, so they plan to sell about forty nine percent and retain fifty one percent and distribute that to the MMTLP shareholders in a non taxable event, or at least that's the idea. And uh, if that happens, then we can be expecting a dividend of about $23 in terms of cash, as well as uh, oil co shares at that point. Uh, that said, if, if we take the cash dividend and we were to reinvest that back into MMAT, uh, we see that there's about 188 million shares available to buy, but uh, there's not enough but if even 8% of the dividend gets reinvested back in, there's not enough shares to buy. So it's possible that MMAT, it's possible that MMAT might see a significant increase in price as a result. So let's have a look at some SEC data. So as we can see, they have some new failures to deliver. Uh, for the first half of January 2022, and uh, it's available for download. And here I've just downloaded downloaded the data and uh, processed it with uh, GameStop for for sanity check. The reason for the sanity check is that uh, I've a I've added an, an an additional Perl script, which um, which I'll describe later on. But uh, essentially, it um, it it finds FT, FT, FTDs of uh, of zero volume of zero volume and inserts an appropriate zero at the um, at at the required places. Uh, there aren't that many uh, zeros that are that were inserted as you can see, but um, but they are there. So uh, so when we run with GameStop data, we can see that that it looks reasonable. The first uh, from January of 2021, we see that there's a lot, large number of FTDs, and the rest of the year, there's not that many FT, FTDs at all, with occasional spikes here and there. So, if we zoom in on the November to the last FTDs that were, that were presented by the SEC, we see that, that the data looks like this, and the newest FTD information that we imported in is uh, is highlighted in yellow. Okay, so let's have a look at metamaterials stock symbol M MMAT in terms of FTDs. Uh, uh, 
the data looks to be processed well. Uh, the FTD information going all the way back till uh, 629 looks, looks reasonable. If we zoom in on just the November time from November till till the last uh, FDs that were presented, we can zoom in and see that uh, the data looks like this. And the newest information was uh, was not really that much information about uh, about meta about metamaterials FTDs. We didn't have that many FTDs at, at the start of January. So if we look at the short interest of metamaterials. Uh, we see that uh, we now have short interest for the for the uh, first uh, two weeks of January, and if we were to plot the short interest, we see that uh, it is rise it's overall rising with a slight decrease decrease at the start of January. Compare that to the price, the short interest, uh, the last column of short interest, is co corresponds with the first half of January. So we can see that. The large amount of short interest there caused a, or could be said to cause a large drop in price of metamaterials at the first half of January. So if we look at the FD, FDD data for MMTLP, looks it uh, there's not that much data, but it's it's there. We can see what it looks like. Here's what it looks like in a graph form going back all the way or zooming all the way till um, from November we see that it looks like this uh, and we look and we see that the newest bit of information looks to have almost near zero volume of FD, F, FTDs so it's not very much it's quite interesting if we look at the price action of metamaterials we see that that first week in January Looks like it looks to have very light volume here as well too. However, we're expecting heavier volume in the last weeks of January, and so we may expect to see some FTDs increase with the next um, with the next release of data from the SEC, which is which is in about two weeks. So that's it. So let me end the video by saying I'm not a financial advisor. This is not financial advice. This information is intended for entertainment and educational purposes only. Goodbye.